Okay, Daddy. So you were born December 7th, 1923, and your mother was Blanche. What was your father's name? Joseph? AJ. Albert Joseph. Albert Joseph. Okay. No, <laughs> you can't go moving the camera on me, Daddy. <laughs> okay. So, and you're the baby of the family. Right. What was it like growing up with two sisters? What was what? What was it like growing up with two sisters? Well. They treated you like a baby, huh? <laughs> Violet didn't. Gone by the time I was old enough to really to have had anything to do with Violet. Mm -hmm. I mean, she apparently I was. Just, how much older than her, or huh? how much older is she? She was she? I think she she was born in 1910. So she was 13 when you were born. I'm not sure. I think it was 1910, or maybe, no, she was born in 1909. Oh. And uh, Walter was born in 1910. Uh, she's two, <laughs> she was two years older than Walter. Okay, and then <coughs> Auntie Mill's the one next up from you. Pardon? And then Auntie Mill was born when? In between you and Walt. <laughs> she was, I was, when I was born, she was seven. Okay. She's seven years. She's seven yeah. years older. Okay. And you're born here in Seattle. Yeah, right up on First Hill. Really? Yeah. Were you born at home or in the hospital? Home. So you lived on First Hill? Pardon? So you lived on First Hill when you were born? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. It used to be a, a school right at the top of the hill in Madison. I was trying to think what it was a high school. And we lived. You don't mean O'Day, right? No. Because <laughs> there is. <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I can't think what they called it now. City, maybe City High School. But you live near that? Yeah. So not too far from my office? Well, uh, actually, uh, they leveled off the hill a little bit. So it doesn't look quite the same, but mm -hmm. uh, it was, well, I'd say, about uh, a block or maybe two blocks towards the sound from Bourne Avenue. And Bourne Avenue was there, and was one of the main roads mm -hmm. going across town. So Bourne was like a main drag through Seattle? So Bourne was like a main drag through Seattle? Well, no, it was... Uh, Just over the hill. Over the hill to Rainier Avenue. Yeah, still is. And still is, yeah. Yeah. So you didn't... So you were born not too far from where I work. Pardon? So you were born not too far from where I work. Yeah, I was probably less than a half a mile, I would imagine. Huh. And then... The big... You know, uh, High school, right at the top, and then two blocks beyond that was where you lived. Four and Avenue. How long did you live there? I'm not sure. We, it was like it. It was a garage down on the bottom. I said, "How long?" I know. Oh, and I said, "Not really." You did really it. <laughs> uh, it, it was in a garage, and there was. Apartments above it, the garage, one floor, and I think there was, in my mind, I think there was about three uh, apartments. So it was an apartment and my house. My first girlfriend was a little bitty thing, <laughs> and I don't remember her at all, but uh, 
they showed me pictures of me with them, like a Bobsy twin sound on me, short down, <laughs> and my arm around the girl. We were buddies. You were sweetheart. She, she lived in one of the apartments. So up through your childhood years, like up when you were in school and stuff, or no, it was, was all before school. Probably before. So I toddler, uh, toddler age. Just I would imagine, I would maybe two or three when the picture was taken, and I was just. And I don't really. You don't remember it much. I don't even remember when the picture was taken, but yeah. I know when I saw it, mm -hmm. it reminded me that uh, there was a little girl who lived in that same complex. So what did your dad do? I think he was supposed to be a house painter. It's supposed to be? But, uh, <laughs> I don't uh, Mom... Um, Walter and Mill and I mm -hmm. left before I ever got to even. Oh. I mean, uh, they, That's right, you didn't know him until you were older. I met him for the first time when I was about 16, 17 years old. Yeah, ago. I forgot. And. Uh, oh, oh, oh. That must have been hard for Grandma Blanche raising three kids during the Depression all by herself. What was that? That must have been hard for Grandma Blanche raising three kids by herself during the Depression. What did she do? Did she have a job or did she have to she went get assistance? She went out and done uh, housework. Hmm. Did she take you with you with her? No. Annie I'm, Mill babysat? Uh, Keisha, I'm <laughs> We got a no, big close-up of Keisha's maybe face. Maybe milk to kill him. <laughs> Just a second. Okay, that works now that we got the dog out of the shot a little bit. So d you stayed home and Annie Mill took care of you or neighbor ladies or something? I was so young. Kudos. <laughs> you might have been locked in a closet for all you know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Keisha. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. So from there, where did you move to? Do you know? Well, we moved around an awful lot. Yeah. I imagine you'd have to in the depression. Well, the thing was that where the job was. Mom would rent a house, which rented for maybe ten dollars a month or fourteen a month, mm -hmm. a month. Which was a lot back then. Which was a lot of money. Yeah. And we got. Uh, oh. From. Uh, Welfare, mm -hmm. and we got food and shoes and stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, we branched out mainly towards Rainier Avenue. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I can't tell you much about when I was really young, yeah, because I don't really remember enough of it, but. Uh, when I was probably about 10 or 11, we lived out on Empire Way, which is now Martin Luther King Way. And I went to school in Columbia, grade school. I had a teacher by the name of Clara Havelstad and another one. What grade was that? Do you remember what grade it was? Uh, Mrs. Murphy was my arithmetic teacher. I think Clara Hannelstad was more or less of a science teacher, I think. 
So back then school was broken down by subject, not by grade? Well, yeah, it was a grade. I'm not sure what. I was either anywhere from grade four, I believe. <laughs> I started around grade three or four, and I was there clear up to uh, eighth grade. Were you a good student or were you a troublemaker? I was a lousy student. <laughs> I didn't want to go to school. I wanted out. I wanted to go and make money to help my mom. Yeah. And I went my most of my freshman year at uh, Franklin. Franklin High School had uh, Mae Chambers was my general science teacher, and she had been Mill's general science teacher, and Mill was her DA, mm -hmm. and she loved Mill. She thought Mill was just the greatest student she'd ever taught. So she expected more from you than you gave her, huh? <laughs> yeah, but she still. See, I'd have you Mill know, type out my papers, and uh, because it looked so neat, my handwriting was so bad. <laughs> I believe that. That, <laughs> that she gave me a uh, uh, passing grade on practically anything I did. <laughs> and I've been sitting in, come in and sometime with different little candies and she'd make sure that I got one. <laughs> and so you were a teacher's pet pain. anyway, huh? No. But <laughs> <it's, laughs> the second year of high school I'd quit and was told that the true monster would come and pick me up. The only way I could skip school would be to live outside the city. So what I did was moved out with my grandpa. He was in the country. Where? He was out by Des Moines, which still isn't part of Seattle yet. Yeah. And uh, my. Uh, Other grandpa was in the. So, which grandpa was by Des Moines? Was that Grandma Mom's, Blanche's? Yeah. Okay. Mama's father. He made. He played the violin. He had stubby fingers and bushy eyebrows like mine. <laughs> That's where I get it from, huh? And he made violins. Oh, wow. He'd get a piece of wood off of a tree or something, and he'd smooth it out and make the you know, take the bark off. And then he'd slice the wood, and uh, he'd make it practically paper thin, put shellac on both sides of it, and he'd cut out the design for filing. And then he'd make a, a back side, and then thin ribbon all the way around. And he'd have the neck already made, and he'd glue them all together. And then put on the frets and keyholes for the uh, yeah, to tune it. strings. And he'd make bows out of horse hair. Hmm. For a while there he had a couple of horses. That's where he got his horse hair. I don't know where he got the string. But he made me a little bitty violin. I mean it was the cutest little thing and it had a 
a bow and everything. But it was a real violin. And uh, I tried to learn to play, but I never could make nothing but screeches and scratching. But uh, when I moved back into uh, with Mom and Walt, after and I would have been out of. How uh, long did you live with him in Des Moines? Mm -hmm. I lived in at least a, a year or two. I come into town, find jobs, make money, and then go back to. So just kind of like odd jobs, not. Well, I never uh, really had a, a serious job until. After, uh, uh. but uh, I love my grandpa. Yeah, he was my other grandpa. And he lived down in South Park, which is, was maybe a couple of miles from the grandpa I lived with. Um, he was pretty decrepit, mm. and he went in to, uh, in order to uh, uh, be taken care of because mm -hmm. my dad was the only kid I guess, and uh, he didn't take care of his dad. Mm. So his dad signed over his house to the Catholic uh, nursing home. They took over the property and apparently, I don't know what, I think they rented it out, but they took care of him. And when I married Irene, I took her to uh, meet. Mm -hmm my father's grandpa. And I think I went one more time and then I, as I recall, I was drafted and it's time to go to war. Do you remember what your very first job was ever? Well, one of the first jobs I was a deckhand on a Puget Sound, like a ferry only, it was, uh, they called it the Mosquito Fleet. I've heard it, of that. It moved uh, groceries, beer, foods, uh, all kinds of things. And it had jitneys on it. And we go like up to Olympia and pick up Olympia beer and then we come back to Seattle. Some of it we'd drop off for a dealer here to take it and to distribute. Some would take up to Port Townsend. Trying to think what the other uh, port towns and then Port Angeles. And we drive out and, uh, foods and stuff there. And we delivered to uh, Vancouver and Victoria, different commodities. Mm. Anacortes. And so you were just a teenager? Ever? Pardon? So you were just a teenager, technically not even out of high school, and you're out swabbing the decks? <laughs> so I drove the jitney and, load, and loaded. What's a jitney? It's like a forklift. Okay. It was the forerunner of forklifts, actually. It was a, like a chain-driven thing. And Drive, drive it under the pallet and you jack it up and get it off the ground and 
and take off and stow it in the belly of the boat. But you were just a kid and they let you do that? Well, I was just... I was probably 17, 18, I don't know. So this is when you'd come back into Seattle? Pardon? So this was after you moved back yeah. to Seattle? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. It was called the Black Ball Freight Line. We delivered by boat, mm -hmm. whereas the other freight lines were trucks. But we carried stuff for her. Now, so when was the Prohibition days? Was that during the 30s? Yeah, and then so Prohibition you, was over with by the time I oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say, so you were hauling beer was... <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you were doing illegal stuff, black market dog. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, the state was in the liquor business even then. Mm -hmm. Twenty-three. They handled all, all the booze. Mm -hmm. and we had to account for the what we picked up. What we delivered. So you, so you said that when you came back, you lived with Grandma and Walter. Annie Mill had already gotten married by then. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, Mom and I and uh, uh, Walter and Mill. Somewhere along the line, I'm not sure just when. We uh, rented a house from the uh, Italian guy out in the uh, little white center. Mm. And uh, my buddy Chuck, who I more or less grew up with, he lived down below. I think I talked Mona going out there, but she found in the house, and uh, that was where we lived when uh, Uncle Jack was courting uh, <laughs> Millie, and uh, he lived downtown, worked at Bowling, lived downtown, and. Uh, He, he had a Model A. Uh, he was such a mechanic that in 20 minutes he could take the engine out of his Model A, tear it down into pieces, shine all in.